Um, well, just a little bit about myself and what I thought I might try and focus on. Um, and um, one thing I'd love to say is that if anyone wants to interrupt and ask a question during this uh, or at any time, that's totally fine with me. I'd, I'd, um, I'd welcome uh, a dialogue. Um, so these are just a couple things about me that, that really kind of formed me as, uh, as an artist. Um, the top two pictures are um, uh, work by my father. He was, uh, his name was Ralston Crawford. He was a pretty well-known artist and a big influence on me. Um, uh, the photograph on the left is the, this blacksmith shop in Tuscany where I worked um, and ended up spending a, close to 10 years there, um, maybe seven out of 10. I came back and forth uh, between New York and there. And I, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I think, I think I have, it's hard to keep these notes straight with the pictures, but I think I'll be able to talk about this a little bit more later. Um, and then the picture on the right is just um, some current work in my studio, but I ended up with a, uh, a place in Brooklyn that I can, um, was able to continue working with uh, forging techniques and uh, um, machining, basically direct uh, metal work. Um, then, um, you know, I thought we might try and keep an eye on a couple of things, uh, you know, uh, that to sort of focus this. In and, you know, one of them, one of them is abstraction, um, which uh, this this kind of this is a photograph on the. Uh, that my father took on the left and uh, a lithograph. Um, but he really stayed very close to things he saw in one way or another. I mean, this is obviously about light, but um, uh, that affected me. I, I don't know, actually I was thinking about it when I was writing this. It wasn't like this was laid out to me when I was a kid, but um, um, I did end up um, staying very close to things I I saw mo most of the time. Um, I also believe rules are made to be broken, so not all the time. Um, the, the other thing is that, that really I, I kind of wanted to talk about that I feel sort of, um, it's the most, it's the easiest to talk about in a way, it's the most objective, but um, is technique and materials. And um, by that I don't mean, um, uh, you know, how to do it, although that's a big part of, uh, big part of it. Um, I mean more um, technique as in practicing a language. And that um, uh, I, I do see the way I work as a kind of language, a visual language, and that the, the more I am able to say, uh, the more fluent I am in the language, the more I can express. Um, I think maybe musicians are the closest, um, you know, analogy that I can think of, um, where they really, uh, I mean, they, they practice all the time in order to be able to kind of do something else. Um, Joshua Prince Ramos was an architect I happened to hear um, say, um, you, you can't create unless you know how to execute, and you can't execute unless you know how to create. Um, and I'm sure lots of we, us artists in this room, you know, I mean, it's sort of, it's an iterative process too. It, you know, I create something, I execute it, that in, then changes how I create the next thing, and it just keeps going. Um, for um, uh, many of us. For me, it's a, it's a big part of how I work. I, I get as much out of uh, how I work and my process and my materials as I do um, what I look at, what I read, um, other art. <clears throat> um, I don't separate concept and fabrication. They're, they're married. Um, it's also in this it's important for me to work with my hands. I, that, and that leads back to this, probably the most difficult word I have of my topics, but uh, 
Um, I have to assume this is true for any medium that that you know any anybody w making something in any way can have a close relationship with how they work and that that's better than not having one in my opinion but it doesn't have to be um, a craft it could be I assume um, you know anything um, and you know the last word I thought I would throw out is transcendence, um, which is, you know, I want to keep that real simple. I, I don't, you know, this is not a theology uh, lecture at all, but, but um, you know, um, I don't get up and go down to the studio and think, you know, what'll, well, what'll I transcend today? It's, uh, it's, I just work, but something happens and, um, you know, uh, that's, that's the thing. I mean, uh, um, the, more I, the more I work, the luckier I get. You know, it's kind of like that. There's not, I don't really have a kind of step, chain of steps between working and what can sometimes happen. But it's, it, it certainly happens, uh, and if we're lucky. Um, and, um, you know, I think that has to do with sort of the, the larger themes, you know, uh, the handprint on the cave wall, you know. I mean, I don't, I, we really haven't improved on that. And it's for everybody, you know. Um, how, uh, how transcendent is that? Um, and, um, you know, uh, the only other thing I would have to say about this is that, you know, whatever transcendence is, it, it doesn't, it's not dependent on technology. Uh, technique is different, but um, in the way I'm using it, but you know, you don't have to have um, the latest stuff or a whole bunch of stuff in order to make things. And in fact, you know, the latest is always, you know, dated tomorrow. And uh, again, that handprint on the cave wall, I mean, that's a, you know, they didn't have much to do that. Um, uh, so on that uh, note, I will dip a little bit into just the technology. Um, oh, I have a pointer right here. Uh, this, this, this you saw before. This is, uh, this is 12th century technology, basically. This, uh, it was, uh, basically it's a water-powered shop. And um, by um, pushing this lever here, forward, maybe I'll try this thing. Uh, you know, you can turn on the water and this starts banging up and down. And um, with uh, hot metal, like here, it, um, it become, it's quite malleable and you can make um, all kinds of things. Uh, it was one of the earliest ways of working. Um, these are uh, a kind of farm tool. Um, it's actually a kitchen utensil, but the shapes um, uh, were consistent with farm tools and other things that we made. This, we made shovels and hoes and axes and all by hand with this, with this uh, equipment. Um, this is in my studio. It's a you know, 19th century technology, uh, 20th, but it's, it's uh, basically a sort of modern counterpart. This, there's, you can't see it, but something bangs up and down in here. And, um, you can form uh, the metal. It's very malleable. It's not casting. Casting is you liquefy the metal and pour it into a mold like a chocolate bunny rabbit or something like that. And, uh, and it, the, the, the metal um, is, it's like water. It, it, it takes the form of whatever is in, was in that mold. This, it's always, uh, you know, solid and it's like clay, but it has a lot of resistance and personality to it and you have to kind of um, uh, get on good terms with it in, and, uh, in order to work. This, this is the same, the same uh, type of equipment. These are all basically the same thing. But here you can see a man, this is probably 40,000 pounds of uh, steel and there's it's hard to see, but there's the, the thing that bangs up and down. And um, 
this is the equipment I used to make one of the, uh, the, the commission for Queens College. Um, so that's, it's, it's a very intense way of working. Um, here's um, uh, a kind of, a, you know, this is an, another one of the tools. This is a, a shovel finished, but this is what we started with. You know, and, and you can see um, it's, a, it's a strange way of thinking, but it's, um, uh, once you get used to it, uh, you, can, it's, it's, you can make really anything. And one of the things I li liked about it, too, is that the, um, the marks seem to follow the form, you know, as, as it's being made. And that's often the case. It, there's sort of, uh, it's almost like it's, um, it, it, they have sort of a credibility, in my view, um, that natural, you know, natural forms have. Um, <clears throat> Another thing that I really responded to, there's the, the in, in, was this kind of anonymous um, and unpretentious design of these, of these tools. You know, they were, you know, it wasn't about how the blacksmith felt that day and it was, um, uh, very um, uh, economic and spare um, and sort of egoless uh, uh, series of decisions to make these shovels this way and other shovels another way, et cetera. And um, I, that really affected me uh, in a number of ways, uh, um, making these tools. But the shapes themselves, and I think I'll get back to this later in the lecture, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but the shapes themselves and also the process um, of um, a kind of uh, repetition of making something over and over again and what, what, how that, that happened. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. This is what you've all been waiting for. Um, I, um, it is a bit of a bait and switch. I actually... Um, you know, most of these decisions were, in looking back, and I don't, I don't know what's going on now, but um, it fairly unpopular at the time. I mean, um, the choices, most of the choices are, at least that I'm revealing to you in part one, um, are um, were uh, choices about about getting really close to a material. You know, I, I, I moved away from the States and from New York, my home. I l spent many years trying to learn how to, how to uh, work with this material. Um, and I've pretty much, I've, I do work in other materials, but, but this is really a very close relationship for me. Um, uh, I also, I basically had to build a factory in order to continue working. The, 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 it's not a it's not a facility that's available, you know, out there. Um, and uh, lastly, I work directly. You know, uh, I'm I'm not unique in these bad decisions. By the way, I'm sure the room is full of people with um, horrible histories of decision making. But uh, I worked. Uh, you know, it's very slow working directly this way. Um, takes a long time to make each piece. Um, uh, at the end of the day, you, you know, I don't generally have uh, something that I can turn into an addition um, very easily. Uh, um, and uh, so all of these things were kind of uh, um, not, not popular ways to, to, to work at that time. Um, I'm going to just... Uh, click through now, that's sort of my, that's the background. I mean, um, I'll go fairly quickly, you can slow me down. Uh, um, this is the, actually the first piece I made in Italy um, in this shop and I, I'd been working on uh, boats and ships and I loved the farm tools. That was actually the original the original decision the sort of was, was based on uh, uh, picking up some farm tools and liking the way they looked as departure points for sculpture. Um, and 
um, I, I, um, I think I'm going to be dipping around, but that's sort of in that sort of abstraction idea. Um, I, I felt that I, I, I early on I learned from making the tools, but from looking around that I could sort of blend um, different visual sources at a you know uh, and, and come up come up with something that had references to different things such as ships and farm tools, um, but um, wasn't really. Um, too specifically related to to anything else, uh, to either or, or wh whatever number of sources I was em employing or using. Are these wrought iron? These are all these are all wrought iron. These are all sort of this first group of pieces that I made um, in this shop in Italy. Um, I was learning also at the at the time uh, how to work, and then I was I was making the tools. I was it was all very very new to me. Um, uh, that'll, that's something I could talk about in the next, uh, in the next slide. But this, this, these three pieces fit together. You can sort of see the, uh, um, the, uh, you know, influence of the, these tool shapes. Um, but it also, um, there's sort of, a, a fulcrums and a counterweight here that, um, uh, so that the whole thing actually, I was sort of proud of myself that it didn't, just look like some, it did something. It actually held itself up and did something. That didn't do much, but it did do something. Yeah. Um, uh, these are, um, I was sort of throwing everything but the kitchen sink in at this early stage. I mean, I was just, I was a sponge. I was, I was everything I saw these uh, Smiths do, I, I, I tried to learn, and things got pretty uh, baroque. Um, and then there's a, a couple of years' work in between these two pieces, and uh, then uh, I s things got much, much simpler. And then I started working back into something that I think still has this quality of um, structure to it um, that I had uh, um, found out about sort of working with, with the tools. Um, let's see, this thing is not there. Um, another, this is something I mentioned before, another um, part of the tool making was the actual process, um, which was very repetitive and, and uh, um, but also uh, you ha I, things were happening so fast. If you make a make a shovel or a hoe, um, you, there's no time to think, uh, and you have to have a kind of like a, a, you know, a turtle knowing the island he came from. You have to have it sort of imprinted on your, in your muscles, is that what the shape and the proportions of a particular tool are. And um, I, a couple of things that I needed to do that for. Um, in order to learn how to make my own shapes, in order to practice. Um, and I also needed, um, I also felt that somehow there was a kind of credibility that, that was increased by that, that um, repetition, at least for me, I convinced myself anyway. Um, this is a, a picture I lifted off the internet probably illegally, so probably shouldn't have signed that paper at the beginning of the lecture, but. Um, you know, I found some, I was exploring around and on a beach there were several of these small fishing boats or ships uh, uh, on the beach kind of propped up being repaired. And I just responded to the image and uh, 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 hence the, the name uh, Brace Forms, you know, these are all kind of ba based on that idea. Um, <coughs> it. Uh, Uh, these sculptures are quite small. Those are maybe, I don't know, about 12, 18 inches tall. If there, there are, um, uh, I did make several that are three or four feet tall. Um, I, I put them in a, um, uh, I thought I would sort of go through in a kind of st hopefully streamlined way so we don't have to wake you all up at the end of the lecture. 
And, uh, but I do have some other slides if you, uh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable trying to hop around at this point, but I could show you some pictures of larger versions of this. Um, Can I just ask you? Sure. Mm. Yeah. No, no, it was there. It was there. Um, it was, a, you know, I mean, I had no equipment. You knew you were a sculptor, but they certainly didn't. They could have, like, what, taken that stuff? Uh, well, Italians, you know, they're pretty, pretty, uh, you know, I, I actually used to sit. I'd be sitting on the, the steps, you know, staring at, uh, you know, some, something like this, right? Some kind of bent piece of metal and a farmer would walk by and ask me what I was doing. And, and I, find, I figured out that the answer was uh, capriccio, you know, caprice. And then he would, oh yeah, caprice, no problem. I, you know, I do that all the time. <laughs> and uh, so um, uh, it, was, uh, it was doable. Um, and it was also, that it was near um, the, uh, Pietrasanta and Carrara where there were a lot of uh, sculptors so it wasn't a completely foreign idea, but being an artist was, um, it's much more embedded in the sort of general culture over there. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, we're not such pariahs over there. You were there from what age to what age? I was there from 22 to 32, with coming back and forth. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, so these are some these are some pieces I'm I'm working on now. These uh, sort of stirrup shapes that that I just thought I'd show you. I, I still use that process. I mean, th these are these tools that you saw in that uh, in that uh, first picture, but these are all things I'm not going to use um, at least for the for the particular. I'll use them on something else, but they're. It was, this is what I've needed to do so far to just kind of learn, uh, familiarize my, my body, if you will, with making these, um, these shapes. Um, uh, this is, there was a, there was at least, there was a point when I was in New York for quite a while and I, um, so I'd been in Italy for quite a while, and this was actually uh, an arch, um, sort of a double arch in a build. It's the MetLife building. It's right near where I grew up. Um, and um, I saw it all the time and ended up uh, um, in this period of New York. Uh, I didn't have, my work changed. I didn't have blacksmithing equipment. Um, I, um, and it was a really urban environment as opposed to this c completely rural uh, setting. And, um, and I ended up again with these sort of arch forms that, um, um, you know, I felt were really kind of uh, close cousins to the tools and that they were really, it was really about structure. There's lots of different ways to handle that. Um, let's see. Um, now, this is, this is, um, I've moved back to the States now. Um, and these pieces were the first, my first exposure to um, the industrial forges, the, the, the big, big piece of equipment in the upper right in that earlier slide. Um, <clears throat> and um, so I, I was able to, um, this is probably about a um, little over six feet. Um, you know, that probably weighs, I don't know, five or six hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it's, it's, uh, I'm trying to, let's see. The other thing that happened was um, <clears throat> I started to learn, I learned about machining metal, which, um, these are these pockets where these forged pieces uh, fit in and uh, this is sort of fitting into this one which is fitting into that one. Um, it's, a, it's a whole nother way of working. Um, again, I have some slides if, we're, if, if there's time at the end we can, we can look at, at them of some of the machines but these are milling machines which 
<coughs> you can cut very, very precise um, uh, uh, surfaces. And um, so I, it, my, my vocabulary just doubled. I had this, um, uh, this kind of organic, uh, um, rough forging shapes and surfaces uh, coupled with this mirror smooth, sort of highly, highly uh, refinable, if you will, um, uh, machine surfaces, and it just became a kind of counterpoint that I, I still work on uh, to this to this day. Um, I'll just I don't think I have much to say coming up here, um, but uh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh yes, that's a good point. Um, it come apart, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's one piece. I'll re the, 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 quest the, the comment was that each piece in that in that slide before was. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oop. Do you mean it's demountable, basically, or, or, or it's a picture? Yes. No. No. All of these. All, the The question was, or the comment was, that all of these pieces are actually separate pieces, and that's actually true. I mean, uh, this is this is the I. How things fit together, you know, if you wanted to do uh, your, uh, you know, PhD on me, you might want to uh, <laughs> think about that, you know. Um, but um, so it's evolved, you know, from the way the way the tools were made and how, and the kind of joinery that they had, th and then the architectural elements. You know, I was exposed to those arches and started thinking about those kinds of elements, and um, so each one of these. Um, of these shapes uh, is a separate shape that I then machined and fit together as opposed to, uh, let's see if I can scoot back. And are they permanently in place now, or are they, sorry, is it? You could take it apart. It, they, they, there's, yeah, there's some uh, secret uh, pathways inside. You know, uh, uh, here, I'll just click back. I mean, these are also, in terms of joinery, um, again, I was, I was just absorbing different ways of doing things. So this is a, um, these holes, you know, <clears throat> and sort of piercing and uh, pushing, putting another bar through was a very common way of making uh, window bars, for example. And um, I'm not sure where this, these joints came from, but uh, um, you can see this. Uh, this one actually moves. This is the only thing I've made that moves, um, except for very recently. Um, so uh, here's a little. This is just sort of a little thread that led up to. I mean, also, you know, as you know, these. Le this is. It's so linear, right? This is not actually the way my life is. You know. Um, uh, but, you know, there are, th this next series of slides sort of shows some things I draw, for example, that's some iron pyrite. Um, uh, another drawing that I made, and uh, this figure from Micronesia with all these little figures all over it that just kind of, uh, it just arrested me. I mean, a lot of, uh, I, I guess we all have that experience too of, you know, it's, it, it doesn't start for me with, so much with uh, ideas as it does with some sort of uh, visual image. And I, um, I, uh, I really felt this was a kind of a expression of like, you know, one thing about fractals, I also, you know, we, a lot of us have looked into sort of mathematical uh, progressions and things and science and stuff like that. And uh, that this was sort of a really poetic, uh, version of, uh, you know, self-similarity across scale, which is a, a you know, a, a notion, uh, a, an aspect of fractals. This is a commission that I made with that large uh, forging equipment 
This is, uh, it's about 40 tons. This is about 30 feet tall. And, you know, the, the process um, is very much informed. Actually, I'll, I'll cut. Uh, the, between, the, there was a period of time that those, the Amherst markers, those wood pieces, there's a few years where I did um, um, several uh, wood pieces. And, and this is kind of what I, um, you know, what I meant, you know, by being sort of um, closely related to, uh, close, on close terms with my materials. I mean, the, clearly uh, this, you know, working with wood really affected um, the way I approached this porch piece, you know, and, and um, the architectural, the, the time spent in the middle of New York drawing, drawing, I drew a lot for a couple of years just in, in the city, you know, really affected me as well as the sort of, as well as the, the farm tools, and it all sort of feeds in. Um, let's see now, we might have, yeah, this is, this is actually doing some of that. Um, it's just a little clip, um, but it's, uh, one of the largest uh, forging presses in the in the states, or it was at that time, and it's essentially the same process at this scale um, as uh, I had a little mustache thing. Yeah. So, so did that guy. Yeah. Even th these guys actually, so wh whoever taught, oh, Sarah, it was about, um, they, they kind of accepted me after they um, got used to me. That was sort of the end. That, 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 that kind of also changed my work. I mean, it was such a, you know, um, uh, you know, heavy duty kind of way of working um, that, Things I, I just I got interested in another kind of architecture, sort of you know primitive housing, and there's other influences there. I'm sure you can imagine. <clears throat> What's the material here, please? Um, the material here is uh, is tin, which is uh, an element, not like tin cans. It's uh, it's. Um, relatively soft, and uh, it actually, uh, that's a good question because there's a, <clears throat> obviously there's a n lot of work that I couldn't fit into this uh, uh, show, but when I, was, uh, when I was in New York and away from all the blacksmithing equipment, I did figure out <clears throat> how to work with no equipment, and that was with tin. Um, it's, you know, at first I thought of lead, but I didn't want to die. So uh, it turned out that tin is, I mean, we cook in it. It's, uh, it's actually quite, um, it's, it's not bad for you, and it's soft, and you can, it responds just like, uh, it, you can forge it. You can, um, so I had a hammer and an anvil, and I've made, you know, hundreds of little tiny one-inch, two-inch tall uh, sculptures. And um, let's see, where am I? Um, you can also weld it and melt it. Uh, there's no title here because I couldn't think of one. Um, but there's a little, sort of a transitional, uh, you know, I, I also got very interested in mainly metal work from Africa, antique uh, metal objects. But on the way, some, some other forms. This piece was shown at, um, the Museum for African Art in a show about uh, materials. And there was a little group show of um, contemporary artists. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's sort of uh, an arch that stood up. Uh, and, um, you know, it did lead to um, a lot of other, uh, uh, the, the next body of, of work. That's why I put this in here. And I also threw this slide in this unnamed area, which is that um, at this point, too, a lot of my work um, is, if you want to call it architectural, I don't know, but it's, uh, 
very simple shapes, um, repeated, or slight, ver slightly varied, um, repeated, and what happens? You know, that's that's kind of um, um, what uh, what's what I've been working with. I think uh, I could almost say from from then to now. Uh, There's a little sort of process of these, you know, very simple shapes. But, um, you know, I would, uh, I call these uh, MBTs, mouth bites tail. Uh, this, uh, you know, because they would get, they would get put together in, uh, in this fashion by squeezing, uh, um, I can't seem to move the slide, squeezing, squeezing the one shape onto another. Um, these are, the, the height of these is uh, between, say, six and nine feet. I think, say, you know, six and nine, something like that. Um, I then, you know, started exploring, you know, this, I, I realized at some point I didn't, didn't have to just be a, a line. And I think now we're, it's really more about pattern. I, I could move laterally as well as uh, uh, vertically. And um, uh, this became a kind of, really a kind of a language. You can sort of see how they're squeezed together. But this, this, this is, again, um, you know, a, to a great extent, uh, or at least part of it, is coming out of the material itself, you know, what, what, what it can do. Um, this is a pretty loosely, uh, loosely based on pine cones, but, uh, um, you know, it's another example of, um, an interest in, in patterns and in mathematical patterns. Um, although that's sort of next on the, the agenda for these, this family of pieces, but, um, you know, they are, um, pine cones do have two they're like sunflower seeds. You know, they have two um, spirals going around in opposite directions, and <clears throat> they're always consecutive um, uh, Fibonacci numbers. Um, and uh, so this was working out something before that of just, I, you know, I, I, I think that the petals on a pine cone grow in, in threes so that each... Uh, one, two, and then there's one on the other side, like, like this one, right? So each, each one of these uh, layers, if you will, going up is made up of, of three petals, and then it's rotated, and that's how the spiral forms. And I think that's what, uh, how pine cones work. Um, here's a full view of it. This is currently at a show uh, at uh, Dorsky Gallery called Minge that um, it was curated by Leslie Wayne and, and Bridget Donlin, and it's up through um, almost through the middle of December. Um, and uh, I, um, I'd never heard that word before, but um, it's um, there. There, it, it has to do. There's actually somebody in this room that knows a lot about it that could maybe help out. But it has to do with um, uh, um, kind of, um, I think, folk, uh, if you will, uh, folk art in the, in the Japanese sense, but I think it means kind of like the tools I learned how to make, um, anonymous, beautiful shapes. Um, <clears throat> and uh, um, that really resonated with me um, <clears throat> in terms of where, where I had come from. That's, that's the little shape on the lower right that <clears throat> That, that fits together, and these all, they're all the same curvature and uh, all of that. Um, I uh, another kind of uh, poor man's fractal, if you will, uh, is. Uh, um, bifurcating shapes, it's, so again, it's this one, uh, 
this one shape, this sort of Y shape or stirrup that um, attaches to two and then, and then four and eight and so on. Um, <coughs> Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't enslave myself to that formula, you know. So sometimes I doubled, doubled them, and sometimes I didn't. Um. So we're near the end of the lecture. There we go. This is what I'm doing now. Um, I, um, I sort of, th this is now turned into something else, but um, um, kind of a, combination of uh, architectural elements and sort of plant plant like life I, I machined them all um, and um, putting them together um, into things like that I'm not sure what's going to happen here yet um, this is these are this is in progress these uh, um, the, the piece in the foreground is has some of those stirrup shapes that I was uh, showed you before, uh, and let's see, they sort of fit together like that. They also come apart, um, and then that's another one I'm working on. Um, then these kind of I mean, it, it sort of makes sense to me, but it's a, it's a bit, uh, it's, they were a surprise to me also. Um, just these, um, uh, this, is the, this is the last group of things I'm going to show you, three or four pieces. And they, they were, they, these are, without a doubt, the most d annoying and difficult things I've ever tried to make. Um, <clears throat> when they work, you know, it's, it's sort of this, uh, I, I think that they have kind of the highest degree of abstraction. I mean, there's nothing there. It's some rings. Um, and they don't even have any shape. They're floppy. Uh, but they also seem, uh, you know, it, it, to me and also watching you see, what, look at them to be sort of intensely... Uh, um, uh, evocative. Um, that's the same same piece hung from another ring. Uh, let's see if this works. Is this going to work? It's a. It's a uh, nope. Oh wait a minute. Uh, Leanne, if if there's no this was a this was a video, but it doesn't look like it is one. Is that? Per, Probably the case. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, some other time. Part two. Um, that's not. Th th these two are. This. These two are not uh, finished yet. I mean, that. This is pretty close. Um, this one is you, you can only see part part of what's going to happen these are um, these are all steel they change I mean uh, they're they're floppy they're you know you can um, that's that's what the video was about you can you can uh, pick these things up from different places they, they uh, we can see down here in the uh, you know, I don't know what this is, but that's a pile of something down there that um, you, you could pick it up and it might be this, or I, I don't, just don't know what that particular piece there's is. There's so many possibilities of what those things look like that we don't even know. Unless we, you know well, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, um, 
th this one in particular, and this is the only, you know, the, the, the last time I made something that moved was that piece in Italy uh, 35 years ago, or whenever that was. Um, and they don't really move, they're just movable, if you will. I guess there's a difference there. Um, it's too bad the video doesn't work because it, it takes on a kind of a, a animal-like quality. Um, anyway, um, that's it.